Well, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Heidi Roth. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm so glad that you could join me here today. Um, today we are going to be baking a very fancy snack board called, called a charcuterie board. Um, actually, no, it's not, not really all that fancy. It's basically a snack board or kind of a, um, a, a French version of a cheese board. So um, just a couple things. If you want to ask a question, that's the nice thing about doing this live. I have my chat box open in front of me. Um, I love it when people ask questions. You won't be able to unmute yourself, but please feel free to use that chat box. And um, I might be asking you questions, so feel free to contribute. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So a charcuterie board, it, as I mentioned, is a French word. And it really, uh, it, charcuterie means um, kind of like meat products. So in a typical charcuterie board, you would have like things like salami, or you might have some sort of pate or sausages. Um, but we kind of think of a charcuterie board now as a very kind of fancy type of snack board. It doesn't have to be all that fancy. Um, it makes a great thing to serve when you have guests, but it's also a really nice thing just, you know, to serve like family movie night or um, just a leisurely meal. And one of the reasons why I really like it is that everyone can kind of just pick at it and, um, you know, have a, have a really nice leisurely meal together. Uh, in England, they call it a plowman's lunch. We might, um, you know, call it snack boards as I had mentioned. So um, really super easy and quick to make and I will show you how. All right, so. The first thing that you want to decide on is what kind of snack board or charcuterie board are you going to use? You could even just use a plate, you could use a little platter, you could use a cutting board, whatever you happen to have in your house. I have this gorgeous olive board here. Um, it's made from olive wood, um, $29 at Trader Joe's during the holiday season. So pretty soon the holidays will be coming up. If you have a Trader Joe's near you, it's really the, the, um, the best place I've seen to buy these, the most inexpensive. You could also go to home, get, home goods, but you know, you could also just use a cutting board or a plate or a platter too. So um, I was really happy to find this and fairly inexpensive as well. The next thing that you're going to want is maybe some little knives. Um, for, for the cheese, maybe some small spoons to stick in some of the um, different, if you have different sauces or dips or anything. Um, and then if you have some small little bowls, some colorful bowls, uh, once again, Home Goods has these. You can find these um, sometimes in little, uh, you know, gift stores. And I use them for so many things, um, not just cheese boards. You do end up using them a lot. So. Oh, Target. Target is actually going to love it because a Target. And if you have some little small nesting bowls, those are, those are good too. And if you don't have any small bowls, no worries. You can just put everything on the board. Um, so let's get started. So typically, what are you going to put onto your board? Um, typically, a charcuterie board would have some sort of cured meat or a pate, um, sausage, as I had mentioned. Uh, so we're going to use, I'm actually just, I got these at Trader Joe's. It's just a kind of a mix of um, some salami and prosciutto. If you're vegetarian, just skip it. There are so many things that you can put on this board. You don't need to put the charcuterie on, but if you like it and if you're doing it, I took my little pieces of salami and I folded them in quarters like this. And I'm just gonna put it right down the middle of my board. There is really no rhyme or reason um, for how you do this. You, it's kind of fun, even if you're not a creative person, you can still make a beautiful board and um, you know, just kind of play around with it. Don't be afraid of it. All right, so then I also have a little bit of prosciutto here. And what I'm gonna do with my prosciutto is I'm just gonna kind of maybe at either end, kind of take a piece and like kind of 
um, just kind of mound it up like that. So it looks pretty. When you're making a charcuterie board, some of the things that you want to think about are having um, some different flavors, different colors, different textures. Um, so with the, um, the prosciutto, that's going to provide a lot of saltiness. And so that we want to kind of balance that out with maybe a little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour, um, and some veggies. So there we go. Kind of just, we'll put the rest aside. And, you know, you don't need to have me you need to have the cheese on there either. If you're completely plant-based, um, you can still make a lovely charcuterie board and it would, maybe would be um, more considered kind of like a, a crudite board or a veggie plate, um, but you can do lots of really, really pretty stuff with it. So the other thing that I typically like to put on my um, charcuterie board, especially if I'm, if I'm going to serve it as a meal, um, is to have you know, some sort of protein and so either the meat or you could use some cheese. So I have a bunch of cheeses here. And really when you're looking at cheeses, you want a variety of soft and hard cheeses, different flavors, different textures. Um, I have found that people typically like brie a lot. <laughs> um, Americans like brie. And maybe this piece of brie might be a little big. So I'm actually gonna cut it in half. Um, just so it doesn't take up so much room because I love to kind of just put all kinds of stuff on my platter. And so I'm going to put my brie, you know, maybe here next to my sausage. Light, light down. And then you want some hard cheeses and some soft cheeses. Another cheese that typically tends to be very popular is a cheddar cheese. And this cheddar cheese I got at Trader Joe's. Um, Market Basket has some really nice cheddar cheeses like this too. So you could either put it up and you could slice it, a couple slices, um, but the fun thing to do with cheddar cheese is actually to kind of break it into like little chunks. And so now not only do you have a variety of kind of colors and textures, but different shapes as well. So that not all of your cheese is just, you know, the plain sliced cheese. So um, that's kind of a fun way to do it too. And if you're wondering what the little green stuff is in here, no, don't worry, it's not mold. Um, it's actually chives. So it's a really nice English cheddar with, with some chives in it. Okay, so, and I see uh, if you're just joining, you'll be able to see the recording of this web webinar and the link is in the chat box. So check out the chat box um, for the link for that. Now, the other thing that I like to do too is I love, love, love blue cheese. So for me, I'm going to put on some blue cheese on my tray and, you know, I'm going to kind of spread things out. Maybe I'll put that one up. And then I'm going to do one more hard cheese. This is also a little sampler of some Spanish cheeses and some manchego, um, and they're kind of hard Spanish cheeses. So with these, because they're already cut in triangle shapes, it's nice, they come already cut. I'm gonna just maybe go ahead and fan them out a little bit. And you know what? The first place that you put your, your cheese or your meat doesn't have to be the final rest, resting spot. You can move things around as you're making up your board. So maybe you decide, oh, you know what? I've got too much cheese on this side. I'm gonna put my brie over here on this side. And that's, that's fine too. Okay, so I got kind of my foundation here. I've got some, my charcuterie, my different cheeses. Uh, the other thing that I like to do now too is put some different kind of dipping sauces. And you go into your fridge, see what you have. Do you have some yogurt that you could throw in like a little bit of grated zucchini and make it tzatziki sauce? Do you have a little bit of hummus? So hummus is always tends to be a crowd pleaser. So I'm going to take my hummus and um, hummus doesn't work so well, obviously, if you just kind of slap it on the, on the board. So I'm actually going to use one of my pretty little bowls and take my hummus and I'm going to kind of put that in there. And don't forget, if you have any questions, 
Don't forget, you can use the chat box. Okay, so I've got my hummus in the little bowl. Maybe I'll put that over here between my prosciutto and my chunked cheese. Uh, what else should we put on here in terms of sauces? Well, I was at Trader Joe's this morning and I saw this Romesco dip. Um, Romesco dip, if you're not familiar with it, is a Spanish dip and it's basically made from roasted red peppers. And you can very easily make it at home. So you just take a jar of red peppers, um, roasted red peppers, grind it together with a little bit of olive oil, some almonds, some salt, maybe a little bit of paprika, and you can very easily make your own romesco sauce. Um, and you don't need romesco sauce for the for the charcuterie board. I just happen to have it. But, you know, my Trader Joe's had it. So maybe you see another type of dip that you like. Maybe you see a an artich artichoke dip or a spinach dip um, that you want to put on on there. Uh, so if you're going to have a couple veggies, it's always nice to, you know, maybe have a little dip or two. So I'm opening up my romesco sauce. Look at that gorgeous orange color. So that's really going to provide a lot, a lot of nice color and different contrast for our tray. Um, okay, let's see. What bowl should I put that in? Hmm. I don't want to take up too, too much room. So maybe I'll put that in this bowl here. And if you're serving this for a crowd, for a party, what I like to do is I maybe just have some backup bowls, and maybe backup cheese. And as I see things are kind of getting a little bit low, I just put a little bit more on. So I'll kind of pile that up here. So, you know, this, this is not only just a board for a party. Don't forget, you can serve this for dinner too. And it's kind of a great way to kind of just go through your fridge and see, see what's going on, see what you have. Okay, so the other thing that I like to put on, so I've got my two little dips. I love olives. So I'm actually gonna um, take my olives and I'm actually gonna put them in a colander and drink it. I could put them in a bowl, but I think actually what I want to do is um, kind of sprinkle them around a little bit. One of the, the fun things to do with, with a charcuterie board is to really pile it high and have every inch of the board taken up with stuff. So um, instead of putting these in a bowl, I'll just kind of sprinkle them around. These are the big, green olives, they have a pit in them. So what you might want to do if, if you serve something with a pit is have a little bowl out on the side, just so people can put, you know, have a place to put the pits as well. So I've got a couple olives, maybe I'll drain them just so they don't get olive juice all over the place. Um, but you don't have to. A little bit of olive juice is not gonna harm anything on your, your platter. Um, and then the other thing that I love is these cornichons. So a French charcuterie board also always has these little pickles on them. They're called cornichons. They're little French pickles. They're very sour, um, but they are so delicious. And they're really nice because they're really just kind of small. You can easily pick them up um, with your hand and, and not have to cut the pickle or anything. And they, they look pretty. So I might take a couple of these, maybe I'll drain a couple of these as well. And instead of, you know, the bowl, I'll, I'll put them in just straight on. Okay, so any questions so far from anyone? This is something that you make a lot at home. Do you have anything that you love putting on or anything that, that you particularly do? Uh, let us know. So we have now, we've got our cheese, we've got some meat, we've got some dipping sauces. We kind of have some salty olives and sour pickles. Um, one thing that we might want to add now is some fresh veggies and something a little crunchy, a little crispy. So cut up some veggies here and I've got my cucumbers and look how it's come along nicely. 
So these green cucumbers are gonna provide a lot of pretty color. And maybe I'll just kind of pile them up over here in the corner a little bit. So at least you have some veggies with your meal, right? <laughs> okay, now, anybody ever seen a carrot like this before? This is a purple carrot. Carrots originally came in all different colors and long, long ago people decided that orange was the best color for carrots. So that's really kind of the only color that they sold. But now when you go to the store, you can kind of see white carrots, you can see purple carrots. And these purple carrots are nice because they have a lot of antioxidants in them. Um, and the same class of antioxidants called anthocyanins that provide that purple color to um, blueberries and blackberries. So you can find a purple carrot. It's kind of a fun thing to have. And inside the purple carrot, it's orange. So it's kind of a pretty, pretty thing to add. So maybe I'll just kind of pile up my purple orange carrots there. And yeah, those are, those are really pretty. Okay, so um, I'm seeing a comment. I do these quite often and love to mix it up with what goes on the board. Um, oh, so this person does multiple boards with themes for each. That's kind of fun. So you could have like a dessert one, I would imagine, and a, a meat one. Um, let's see, uh, another person asked, do purple, do purple carrots have a different taste? You know, honestly, they don't. They if I close my eyes, they would taste like a carrot. Maybe a little sweeter, um, but, but not really. Um, so, and feel free to share with us what kind of themes you have for your other boards. Okay, so I've got a couple carrots here. And so we have some veggies. Now the other thing that you, that's nice to have on your board is a little bit of sweetness to kind of balance out um, some of the saltiness um, and sweet goes very well with salt, as we know. Uh, yeah, I think chocolate covered pretzels, we always, it's delicious having something sweet with something salty. So um, you can add on whatever fruit you have, even if you just have some orange slices that you wanna put on, that would be a pretty orange color. I'm just going to cut my apple half up here that I already poured. And then with my apple, what you can do is you can kind of fan it out. And maybe we'll put that, that fan over here by our, by our cheese. Let's see how it's looking here. Um, and the other thing that I like to do sometimes is some dates. Dates are... Basically, they're nature's candy. Um, they're so delicious. They are very sweet. So maybe you do want to cut up a couple in half. These already come pitted, so it makes it really easy just to cut them in half. And for a cheese board, if you can find it, it's nice to have the pitted dates because then you don't have to worry about one more pit for people to have to deal with. So I'll just take a couple dates. Maybe these are really big dates. So I'll cut them in half again. Kind of spread these out in this corner here. Now, different people have different ways that they like to do this. Some people would take the dates and they would sprinkle it over the whole thing. I tend to like um, blocking different chunks of color. And maybe I'll, I'll do little sprinkles here and there, but um, I, I like the big kind of blocks of color. And we'll sprinkle some, some um, nuts on at the very end. Okay, so we've got our little sweetness of dates. This is also another nice thing to add for sweetness. This, oh, you can't see it. This is fig jam. And fig jam is like dates. It's very sweet, um, but it really does provide a little bit of that nice kind of contrast. Um, so what you could do is you could put the whole, the whole jar on like that. Uh, it kind of takes up a lot of room. So I'm gonna use one of my little small bowls and my spoon and I'll just kind of put a little mound of big jam on there so people can also have a little jam. Um, you know, you could also, if you had another type of jam, you could also sprinkle, you know, put some on top of the, 
the brie cheese. In the winter time, when there's a lot of pomegranates, it's really pretty if you get a real pomegranate and put some pomegranate on. Um, maybe you put a little bit of mustard on. And oh dear, I'm missing one of my small bowls. Um, so, well, we're gonna skip the mustard for this time because I, I accidentally used up the bowl that I meant to put the mustard in. So you could put some mustard on. Um, we've got some strawberries and I'm gonna save the strawberries for last. Once I have all my main things on, then I'll kind of fill in with some nuts and with some strawberries. Um, crackers or bread, you can either put on the side or you could put it right on the tray. So these are crisp bread crackers. They're actually gluten-free. So if you have someone gluten-free in your group, they're really nice. And they're basically made from sunflower seeds, oat flakes, sesame seeds, um, a little bit of canola oil. So they're really healthy. A much healthier alternative than, um, you know, your typical American Ritz cracker type of thing. So I might break these into little smaller pieces because they're kind of big. I just kind of break them up there, kind of pile them over here. And now we'll put um, some olives on, um, our strawberries on, a couple here. So now we can start filling in and just making it kind of really abundant. So we'll put, you know, kind of some olives, we'll sprinkle in different places our olives, maybe pile up some of our cornichon here in the corner. Um, and we can also just kind of put them here and there just to kind of fill up some spaces. Maybe I'll put some more olives over here. And then uh, let's see, we have some nuts. So these are just raw pecan halves. Nuts pair really nicely with cheese and with fruit. So, Put a couple of those here and then we sprinkle on some more of our nuts in different places. We we'll put some more strawberries over on this side. So we'll pile up our strawberries and we can kind of have some room if we have any extra room for an olive or cornichon here or there. We'll put them. All right. So this is basically kind of um, ready to go now. The last kind of finishing touch that I like to put on sometimes is rosemary. And, um, and if you, you know, I'm ashamed to say I bought this at the store. My, my rosemary plant was outside while we were on vacation. And um, during the, the two droughts that we had here, it's not looking so hot. So uh, I bought some rosemary at the store, but Rosemary is super easy to grow. Um, so if you have some in your garden, um, it grows really well. And it always makes a really nice addition to this tray because it kind of just adds a little bit of extra green and um, makes it really pretty. But there we go. Um, so as you can see, this is mostly stuff that mo you most likely have either in your pantry or in your cupboard already. And here, I'll turn this around so you can see it from, from the other side. And really super quick and easy to make. I mean, I really didn't chop anything beforehand. I kind of just did everything while we were talking. So it's a really fun opportunity to kind of wow either your family or your guests and super easy to put together and delicious as well. So maybe I'll put my knives in here. Anybody needs a knife for anything? Actually, we don't need to. Okay. So that's our charcuterie board. I'm going to look now and I see we have some questions. Um, okay. So we got a reply back. I usually do meat and cheese together with pickles and olives, fruits and nuts on another, and a fun fruit dip, veggies and dips on a third, and then a des dessert board, depending on what type of year. So, um, We've got a, a charcuterie board pro there, I would imagine. Um, so here you go. Any other questions? Doesn't this look delicious and yummy and just a really nice kind of leisurely meal 
to sit down with either some family or friends. So, um, all right, let's see. Um, not seeing any other questions from anyone. Um, thank you all for your kind words and I wish you were all here to share this with me. Um, but you can very easily put your own together as well. And uh, thanks so much for joining me here today. <laughs>